Is he live? He's late. He's late. How dare he be late? Let's get this kicked off. Wait a second. What on earth? Does the looper not work? Oh no. The looper is not working. Hold on. There we go. I thought we had it. Just had to turn up the volume here. All right. That was a that was a moment of minor shock. What key are we in? I think we're in uh, A flat. And in five four time, boys, let's go. in the chat let me know in the chat as always where you're coming from ashish to ari says bring grant again i'll see if i can do that in a bit but before we do that we're gonna have a bunch of other guests on here i think tears is gonna come on next week um we got a few other people i'm working on we'll see how it goes maybe uh get any Dawson from dark curiosity we, she's in malaysia so it's gonna be time schedule problems because this is like three in the morning for her we'll see, see if we can get that worked out Ashish Tuari, uh, all right, let's see, Christoph Nagy is here from the Czech Republic. Oh, who else we got? Uh, we got Chino Hoshis from France, as usual. Athena Luna is from Northeastern U.S., almost 3 p.m., Maine. That smiley face reminds me of Dr. Manhattan, says Christoph Nagy, that's great. Tim is back, boys, yes he is. All right, let's see, we got Czech Republic, we got Gulf Coast, Texas. We got people here sing, telling me to sing about the icing model. Maybe we'll do that in a bit. Hi from the UK, says the Mamguzian. Uh, let's see. Peace be with you from California. Clemson, baby. Hi in England. New York, hi from the Netherlands. I built an awesome blanket fort, and I'm going to post it in the Discord, says JM101. Please do that, JM101. Let's see. Oh, I scrolled again. I got to figure out a way to put this on slow. Czech Republic, Norway, Argentina, Medi from... Ele Bring Medi from Electroboom. I've never talked to him. I'll see what I can do at that. Soviet motherland has entered the chat. That's a... T <laughs> that was more Scottish. I don't know what I was doing there. Um, we got Romania, California, Minnesota with a D. Uh, California Bay Area, Hilo, Hawaii. Tucson, Arizona. Hello from North Carolina, says Farky Plier. And P. P Overman is here from Holland, Europe. Ivan just says thank you. Thank you, Ivan. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> everybody, uh, I, I don't know. What should we do? Welcome, welcome to the stream now. Oh, welcome to the stream now. Welcome. welcome. Should I do some singing? And welcome, yeah. Welcome to the stream now. Woo. And welcome, welcome to the stream now. Woo. And welcome, welcome to the stream now. Woo. And welcome, welcome to the stream now. Woo. And welcome. Welcome to the 
physics monster says I feel really welcome to the stream. That's good. Mm. Can I do uh, improvs in 5-4? Let's find out. Tell me what you want you to sing about. Let's start with the icing model. When you put a bunch of spins in a row, oh yeah, and then you put those rows into columns in three-dimensional rows. When you get them all lined up and spinning around, oh, they spin the same way they get line, yeah. See, I sing, oh, he made a model, oh yeah. It makes spins combine and affect one another, yeah. And then I sing, he saw that model. Was it icing or was it somebody else? Identically for one and two dimensions. Yeah, renormalization. Surprisingly, it turns out the icing model in two dimensions is equivalent to gravity. Oh, yeah. A special version of gravity that's in only two plus one dimensions. In ADS space, that's the case. It's really hard to sing over this 5 4 beat now. Jonathan Haywood just gave me a $30 uh, uh, thing. Thank you, Jonathan Haywood. Said it's my birthday. But you get the gift. Thanks for your music and positive outlook. Cheers. Thanks so much, Jonathan. That's great. I really appreciate that. Oh, what was I going to think about? That's a, this is a hard one, people. There was someone else that said I should sing about something else. What was it? Sing about Feynman diagrams. All right, let's sing about Feynman diagrams. But you guys give, give me other things to sing about. Hey. When you try to solve quantum field theory, then you gotta use mathematical tricks to make it easy. Then you look at those awful integrals from Schwinger, and you Decide that you have got to go a little bigger than Feynman. He's here to tell you how to make that awful integral into something much cleaner. You draw them little propagators, and then you have a way to calculate them Oh no, where my lyrical says they just massively failed my exam I'm so sorry, I'm a lyrical Do better next time, I guess It's okay, I have also failed exams in my life Oh yeah You use it and you take it and you try harder next time and get some Information in your brain, yeah. Oh, yeah. Failure is only failure if you let it fail you. By which I mean you give up. Oh, keep going, and my lyrical keep going. Welcome. Welcome to the stream now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Suggested it. Have you seen Interstellar? There were things that they could have done weller. If they got one thing right, it was 
is that one diagram when the guy gets the paper and pokes through with his pen see a wormhole is a point in space where you take space and you align it with another place yeah you take points that are far away on the metaphone and you connect them with a hyperspace To make it with crazy matter Cause we don't know how to make space curve In a way that has negative curvature No But if you did and kept it open Long enough Maybe you could get back home without travel And you could see your mom Oh, cause you're far away on the well Slava Baranova, welcome. Welcome, welcome to the stream now. Hey, hey, Eric Hagen just gave me 50 knocks. I don't remember how much a knock is worth, but thank you so much, Eric Hagen. He says, keep it up. Sweet. Hmm. Electricity bends space, and that's how warp drives work. JM 101, yes, that's true. Electricity does bend space. Unfortunately, it still bends space in the wrong direction because it has positive curvature, positive energy, and you need to make it into negative curvature. And there, you need some sort of exotic matter to make that work. And the only thing I can, anyone can think of that makes that work is if you have a really big Casimir effect between two very closely aligned elect electroconductive plates, which make the vacuum actually lower its own vacuum energy, which might make it curve negatively depending on how vacuum energy and space-time curvature actually work, which we don't know, because if we did it naively, we'd have a curvature that was 120 orders of magnitude too high compared to the actual energy that we see in the universe with the curvature. Ugh. So, uh, all that to say, I don't know how to make a warp drive, but NASA's working on it. You best believe NASA's working on it. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I should know what a knock is Cause I went to Norway in Oslo And I spent 250 knocks on a hamburger I think it Might have been more than that It was a lot of knocks It came out to like $50 Cause y'all have a crazy uh, cost of living up there Oh Yeah, and then I swam in a fjord It's real cool Ragastar Nope, that's not your name Ragav Ragav Srivastava Asks, why is time considered as a dimension? Well, here on the stream, gonna blow your mind. We use non time and space dimensions all the time. Oh, anytime. Say it economics. You want to have two separate axes, you call them dimensions to plot it. Think the question that you want to know is why we use time like space as a dimension. No, no. Well, the reason is because of Einstein, special relativity found that time and space they could be combined see you can rotate something like it hyperbolic when you move faster or slower that's how you can solve it and when you see space and time are one object then space is a dimension, then time has to be a dimension also. Oh yeah, but welcome. I'm not really sure about that. As I said yesterday, I think there might be some emergence another way. Don't know if I'm making sense. 
Some symmetries are real symmetries of a system And others are just long approximations and we've missed them And that's why physicists are always looking for the break A break in Lawrence invariance telling us we made a mistake But they so far haven't been able to find them And so we gotta keep that as a dimension Remind them Oh, welcome, 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 welcome Welcome, welcome to the stream now Just singing about science on the stream now Welcome, welcome to the stream now Alexander O. Cohen knows about me Cause space We start a flame war. Adam Scarborough says time is not a dimension. Adam Scarborough, where are you getting your facts, bro? Put them in the chat so we can see. Um, let's see. Annalise, Annalise Double Dam says, "Hey Tim, funky sound, yeah. You like the five four, huh? Check out the the polyrhythms. What's going on here? We got like a five count. Yeah." One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. But then we also got We got on the off beats. We got one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and yeah. Then we got some some things going. One two three, 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 one two three. That's weird. What can we add up? One two three four. There. How's that for polyrhythms? Oh yeah. There are three people from different places in the Netherlands now. I'm pretty sure there are more than three places, three people in the Netherlands. Limburgish, but do you mean on this stream? Ooh, the Mamguzi and Sandwich do fluid dynamics. Boom. I used to do. No, 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 no. Ooh, that was a false start. Let's try it again. I used to be really into something called fluid dynamics. Every day, all night, I would pace around and plan it. Specifically, I was trying to figure out how to do an analogy between fluids on the surface, waves, and things in gravity. There's a way. Sing about gravity in a way that's like fluids familiar to you and me. You see, when you get down to the physics, if you have a sound wave in fluid, it's like a black hole in the limit. You have a point, and all the fluid flows in it. And if it's flowing into a point, it goes supersonic. And if it's supersonic, then there is an event horizon for sound. Where the sound waves can't get out, they're stuck in the hole and rolling around. So it's just like gravity. Oh, now you can see. Why? The fluids kept me up all night without any sleep But that only works for a perfect bit non-viscous fluid And if you use the navvy's dose in entirety, I don't think you can do it No Oh yeah Oh Hey yeah 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 It's really nerdy, yes it's really nerdy what happens when you're on this acapella live stream it's gonna be a real nerdy time
got a question about how time, how length contraction works. It's real simple when you think about it, but it'd be kind of pert. What does pert even mean? That's not a word. Pert is a word, I just don't know what it means. C. How do I explain this? You and everything around you are made of waves. When you're born, you're made of waves. You'll be that way till the end of your days. And when waves go faster, they contract. It's called the De Broglie-Bohm equation, I think, and that's a fact. I might be wrong. Anyway, when you go faster as a wave, you gotta get more compressed. It's a thing about momentum and energy conservation, I guess. Yeah. So, if you are a wave and you're going real fast, you will contract. Hmm. Yeah, it's not real physics, it's, it's not solids, it's more about how we're all frequencies, you know that. That's what it turns out to be at the bottom of special relativity. The fact that nothing is solid, it's all light speed waves, you see. Even things that can slow down is cause there are light speed waves that's trapped. The Higgs field or a potential keeps it there and pulls it back. Yeah. Oh, welcome to the live stream. So, what should we do today? We got some things in the Discord. In the Discord today, uh, I've asked a, a philosophical question. Um, I, I only asked it like maybe an, an hour before we got on here, so I'm gonna give you guys some time to go into the Discord. If you haven't signed up, there should be a link to the Discord down there. Um, the dis discussion questions pinned in the discussion for today. Um, the question is, greatest good for the greatest number is the utilitarian uh, maxim, but what constitutes the greatest good? If you have to pick something, what to you is the greatest good? It's a very subjective thing. You could talk about, is it happiness? Is it freedom? Is it beauty? Is it truth? Is it love? Is it connection? Is it loyalty? Is it uh, justice? I don't know, many, many, many things. We're gonna have a philosophical discussion later on. So if you have thoughts about that, uh, go down to the Discord, put it there. We're gonna do some of that a little bit later. Um, might be a little bit of a, a heady philosophical topic, but we'll try to make it fun. Um, yeah. Let's see. Zach S is asking, here's a stretch, since I haven't seen you sing about it, can you spit rhymes about ecology? Oof. So the truth is, Zach, that I don't actually know much. Like, I feel like I, I haven't really got into the fine details of ecology so far. Um, but let me see if I can give you something. Oh. Oh. When animals are... Nope. <laughs> this rhythm's... This rhythm's so weird. Oh, especially the polyrhythms, they're just messing with my brain. I've never tried improv in 5-4 before. There was a time when we thought you could just kill whatever you want. We went out and killed mammoths and big cats like it was the flaunt that we could do, uh. Then we discovered that there are very simple equations. For how population dynamics grows and changes in dimensions. Oh, what does that mean? See, there is a thing about what your population will do next year. There is a region where it's stable and one where it's chaotic, I fear. Oh. It gives a really stable model for how to make things like chaos. And also, it predicts if you have a bad year, how you will rebound, of course. What's the name of that equation? I can't remember it. It's the one about population dynamics. I don't know it. Then there were things in game theory 
that also apply to the field of ecology. Like things of weather, you should have a particular strategy. Whether to be a hawk or a dove in your community. Oh, it depends, it turns out, all hawks is bad. But if you're all doves, then there's also an opportunity to be had. So that applies when you're playing the social games, yeah. But it also applies when you're an animal and you don't even know the names. Things like equations, you just do it by instinct. Cause it's encoded in your genes. Oh, that's how it seems to me. Oh, did I get it wrong? I gotta study more about ecology. Yeah. I gotta go to the bottom of Minute Earth and see all their backlog. Yeah. Oh, and then I'll know how to tell you how to protect things that live in logs and lakes and things. Oh. Oh, yeah. Also, don't throw your plastic bags in the ocean. I know that much. Yeah. Cause the ocean's not good for plastic. The little fish eat it, and then the big fish eat the little fish. And then the bigger fish eat the little fish that eat the little fish. And then whales and dolphins eat the big fish. Oh. And then, oh, Zach says you can help me learn some cool ecology stuff. Yeah, Zach, uh, put it in the Discord or something. Or just put it right here. That works too. Um, but the Discord is more, more lasting. It'll be here, it'll be there forever and I can go look at it. Ooh. Once you get up to a dolphin, you really want to know that all the things it's eaten were all thin and not plastic. Oh, yeah. But if those fish it ate, ate other plastic fish, oh, then when you see a dolphin, it's gonna be eating mostly plastic dish. Whoa, welcome to the live stream. Oh, welcome to the live stream. Oh yeah, welcome to, welcome to the live stream. We're gonna welcome you. Welcome you to the live stream. We're gonna welcome you to the live stream. We're gonna welcome you to the live stream. Live stream, live stream, live stream. Whoa. What is that? Is that a particular robot voice? It is a particular robot voice. Why do we speak in your language? We've been able to do that. You can slow it down if you want. Welcome to the stream now. Hey, this is kind of a frenetic energy today, welcome, isn't it? Welcome to the stream now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Said welcome. Welcome to the stream now. Oh, said welcome. Welcome to the stream now. Hey, JM says I have to leave in 30 minutes. Mark Rober's stream. That's totally cool, JM. I understand that Mark Rober is a cool dude. I haven't checked out his stream so far because it always happens at the same time as my stream. Um, but uh, he, he's made some cool glitter packages and he made a car bounce on a trampoline and uh, I don't know, he's a pretty, pretty sweet guy. So um, I do understand, JM. That's totally cool with me. You got to take off. You got to split your time. I'm really like, I'm actually really glad that there's so many people doing this now that people have to like split their time between the things that they want to watch most because like that's the whole point of this guys is that we have lots of cool places that we can hang out on the internet together um so that's that's great that's great you go jm um all right we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do some question answering i feel like when i answer questions without music it's just kind of it's a little bit dull guys yeah, it's just a little bit dull let's do a little loop <laughs> Answering your questions, yeah. Answering your questions, yeah. 
Is that good? <laughs> That's not very good. Um, anyways, it's a thing. Um, Arpad Blazdik asks if I prefer pie or tau. The answer is that I prefer tau. Um, most gen most genuinely. Um, I, d I don't know if it's worth rehashing the arguments. All the arguments have been rehashed already, but, uh, look. Look, look at it this way. Pi. You, you, you tell a kid, hey, you're gonna go, you're gonna turn around, you're gonna start here, start here, you're gonna turn around a quarter of the circle. How far have you gone around? They're gonna say a quarter. Um, and then you say, well, how, what, what is it in degrees? They're like, okay, it's 90 degrees, I've learned that since forever, so whatever, 90 degree angles. And then you're like, what is in radians? And they're like, well, it's a quarter of a circle, so pi over four? And you're like, no. No, it's pi over two. Pi over two? Why is it pi over two? Well, because pi is, pi is only halfway around the circle. Well, why is it halfway around the circle? Well, because, because that's how the Greeks thought it should be, because they didn't know about radians, and they thought the diameters were more important than radiuses for circles, and so, so they made pi the, the, the difference between the, 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 the ratio between the, di the circumference and the diameter, and your student's like, but, but you've been teaching me all this time that for circles, the thing that's most important is the radius, and not the diameter, like the diameter is just twice the radius. We always deal with radius, as all our equations are pi r squared and two pi r and all that. What's with, why is dia why is the two with the diameter in there? And then you have to realize that in fact the only reason it's like that is because the Greeks didn't do it right the first time. Um, so, so now we've got the situation where half a turn around a circle is a whole pi, and a whole turn around the circle is two whole pies, and a quarter turn is pi over four, pi over, see I can't even do it, pi over two. Um, and then, like, especially like, like this, what's this, this is pi over, pi over six? Why is that pi over six? This is, this is two pi, pi over three is like that? Why is that pi over three? It's clearly one sixth of the way around to the circle. It's the size of a trivial pursuit thing, which is one sixth of the circle, and everybody knows that. Why can't it be something over six? So the thing that it should be over six is tau, which is two pi, which is a full way around the circle. One turn, half a turn, a quarter turn, a quarter tau. It just makes very, very, very much sense. Um, so there's the answer to that question. I said I wasn't gonna rehash it, but in fact, I did, I did rehash it, so there we go. Um, oh, let's see what we got. We got people debating pies in the chat. That's good. Have a, have a healthy debate. Free, feel free to, to, to re-debate. Um, Limburgish Mapping says we should redo maths, and yes, we should. We should redo maths. Just like we should redo, um, you know, the sign conventions of, uh, of current. Because it's ridiculous that electrons are negative, and they're the ones that are flowing. So your current, if, if you're doing current diagrams, you got a wire, your current is flowing this way, but your actual electrons are flowing that way, and you're just gonna get confused with minus signs forever, and you can get all your exam questions wrong. It's not necessary. Just make a, like, it's completely arbitrary which one is positive, which one is negative, and the only reason why one is negative and the other is positive I can't remember, but it's probably back to the Greeks or somebody again who are like, oh, well, it's wool and wool is negative and amber is positive or whatever. Um, there's no rhyme or reason to it, and uh, therefore, just switch them around. But the problem is that if you switch them around now, you're, you've got to get everybody aligned to do the same thing at the same time. And that's something that, like, sociologically just does not work. You can't get people to freely switch from one thing that they're used to to another thing that they're not used to. If you could do that, you could solve pretty much every global problem in the world and uh, it doesn't stop people from trying because people are always saying we should do this yeah we should maybe but are you going to yes and then how are you gonna get everybody else to when now they're all saying we should do something else there's no we it was just you and the effects that you can have on the world and so I can shout into the void about tau and about electrons and how they're the wrong way around but really it's gonna take the next generation of people just doing it as a default and maybe they can at least get a little sort of community that's got it and then evolutionary dynamics can take over where the community that does better will expand a little more the community that does worse will expand a little less and then maybe over like a hundred thousand years we can get to the point where pi is the right way around and we have electrons that make sense yeah so oh, this is gonna drag out, says Alice Walker. Um, I don't. I would. Uh, oh, I think that there's, there's. Alison Walker is saying bandana face masks are cool song. Oh, okay. We want to do a face mask song.
If you can get a face mask. Oh, yeah. Hold on. If you can get a face mask, you should probably give it away right now. There is a shortage And your hospitals need them But in the abstract If you could have one on your face There is a hierarchy of ones that work and ones that don't work so well, but they still work somewhat. So at the best are the N95s, but they're in low supply. Oh yeah. They block out at least 95% of all particles If you wear them right, which is kinda hard Next are the surgical masks They block out about 50% of particles In laboratory tests which is still better than nothing And it's definitely something if you're sick Cause you can't him to it and you don't spread as fun After that there are homemade masks Made of cloth and something like that Still good at keeping droplets close But when breathing in, I don't know if they help at all I would imagine a little bit But it's complicated Cause when you have a moisture on your face you, you can raise it, your likelihood of something going wrong Professionally made ones Help wick away moisture, that's part of their design And so it's unclear So much is unclear But make your mask And if they ask you to make them for hospitals, I guess and as we know more, we'll make better ones And hopefully people here in the West will Stop thinking it's stupid to wear them out in public Yeah That got a little political Probably got a little political We'll go back here <laughs> uh, did, we, did we lose people on that one? I think we lost a couple, we lost a couple people uh, That's alright <laughs> Let's see, um... Hmm... Can somebody tell me, says Christoph Nagy, why dy by dx of x to the n equals n? Oh, you mean why... Is that, is that are those capital D's different for some reason? Like, the, are the capital D's different from, from little d's? Because I, I don't, I don't know that capital D notation. Um, dy by dx... Uh, D, D by dx of x to the n usually equals n times x to the n minus 1. Um, and the reason for that is, like, it's it's not really something you can... Like, I can't, I can't say it to you, but if you do the limit definition of derivatives and you work it out, um, it becomes pretty clear, so I would, I would suggest you go back to the limit definition, which is where you, you take, like, you take a rise over, like, a, a rise between two different y's, 
over the run of two different slightly different x's and you re as the limit goes to infinitesimal size you reduce both of them and you see what happens to a function at a given point um and it'll fall out you'll see why it is and then that's the, you know, definitionally you got it um but if it means something else i don't know yeah JM101 is asking if I can explain photonic booms. Oh, I guess I can. But first, let me try to just make it a little, a little more simple. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Um, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. A photonic boom is like a sonic boom with light. Oh, yeah. See, doesn't that seem impossible? Cause in a sonic boom, you got something going faster than sound to make it. The thing is that not all light goes at the speed of light. Cause light is actually just a, you know, the speed of light is just a mathematical construct for the signaling speed of the vacuum given its permittivity and receptivity. And uh, the vacuum is not everywhere. There are media where light slows down. Um, so in glass, for example, glass bends light and it bends different light at different speeds. It changes light's speed by different amounts depending on the frequency, which is why your glass bends out things in a rainbow. And, uh, yeah. So in a, in a medium, you can have something that's going faster than light goes in the medium, and then it makes a sonic, a, a photonic boom the same way that a sonic boom makes a sonic boom, which is that light the the wave front of whatever luminescence it generates in that medium can't travel fast enough to escape it because it's going faster than it so it builds up in a shock wave and then blasts outward yeah oh lobe copper is asking lob copper how do you do surface integrals i want to know how well, you add up all the little squares on a surface and their values on each of those squares and you sum them all up and you take the limit as the size of your squares goes infinitely small while still covering the entire surface and then you do it. You, you add them all up and you get the answer. Or you can use Gauss's law which turns the limit of, turns the, the surface integral into a volume integral based on changing the field you're integrating over into the divergence of the field, I think. Or vice versa. I can't remember. Do you think the universe is finite or infinite? Says our Pat Blasik. Oh, I think it's probably finite. That would be my guess. Cause I can't figure out how to sort out the philosophical problems of actual infinities. Things like Hilbert's Hotel and such. Oh, it's all too much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not necessarily finite, but expanding Limburgish. It could be infinite and expanding. The same way that if you have a number line and you multiply every number by two, you stretch out the number line, but it's still infinite even though it was infinite before. Yeah. Oh, but it could be finite and just bigger than we can see. That's the problem with our perspective. Yeah. Cause we can only see out into the Hubble radius, which is the radius at which the space is going faster than light from our perspective, so that light from there will never reach us. Mm hmm. And that Hubble radius is converging to a particular quantity while the universe keeps expanding, which means that all the galaxies will eventually be outside our Hubble radius, and then if anyone lives there, they'll think that the galaxy is the only galaxy in the universe. And just like that, we might think that our patch of the universe is most of the universe, but in fact it's a very small part of the universe. And there's so many orders of magnitude above that, that there can be some curvature that would close it up. But maybe not. Maybe it's actually infinite. I don't know. Hmm. Is it just me or is this jam oddly like the music in Company? Oh, there does, does, here comes Company. Something, something, here comes 
company. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit. Or <laughs> are you thinking? Oh, you might be thinking of. Uh, I, I'm not getting. I'm not getting married today. It, it does sound a little like that, doesn't it? Um, I don't know. Sondheim's great. You guys should look up Stephen Sondheim and especially a video of his about just going through how he thinks about making, like, like Into the Woods, I think it was. He made a whole video of, like, long, hour-long presentation of how he thinks about, like, the musical structure and, like, phonetic structure and all these stuff of, like, Into the Woods and Sweeney Todd and all these things, and it's crazy. The Sondheim gets right into these details of, like, if I'm, if I want, like, a whispered section, then... I've got to have like s more s's and and spray sorts of sounds in my lyrics. And then if I want to build it up, then I need more liquids and light sounds. Um, and and uh, like it just makes you realize that art is this unceasing f like fractal of complexity where every time you thought that the small details didn't matter, someone has actually gone and looked at the even smaller details, and in fact they did matter because Sondheim was one of the greatest. Uh, Composers of musical theater of all time. <laughs> uh, rants with Tim, rants with Tim. So the bubble radius is like our render distance, says JM101. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know what render distance is. I'm not, I'm not that into it. Stop touching your face, Tim. I just saw me touch my nose on the live stream. Stop it. And Smith wants to know if antimatter will annihilate the universe. Oh, and Smith, I think probably not. There's no indication there that there is much antimatter in the known visible universe. And if there are patches of antimatter galaxies and antimatter people there outside our Hubble horizon, then they'll never get here. Mm hmm. But it's always possible that distant galaxies are made of antimatter instead of matter. It's really hard to tell because antimatter emits the same sorts of light. Uh huh. But if there was, you would expect there to be a boundary somewhere in our visible universe where the interstellar medium changes from hydrogen to antihydrogen. And you would see a lot of X ray, gamma ray annihilations that we don't see, so we don't think it happens. I think it's just universe that's all made of matter, which is really weird because no one really knows why there should be more matter than antimatter. Like, they're, they're so, they're very equivalent, and there's some, some very small differences, but it's one of the main problems in, uh, in cosmology, is figuring out this, what they call baryon asymmetry, which is that when the universe was, was first formed and all of the particles jumped out of the vacuum because there was just intense amounts of energy floating around, there were a billion and one matter particles for every billion antimatter particles. And then they all collided together and annihilated, and what we're left with is and made of is the one billionth of matter antimatter that survived that horrendous battle. And nobody knows why there was that extra one, really. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. If antimatter won't annihilate the universe, then what will? Does something have to annihilate the universe? Can't the universe just, just, go, just go on doing what it does? I don't know. Titan fish. You should be a little pessimistic about this universe thing here, I think. Ooh. Wait, I'll stop doing that. Some of y'all make me think you're just asking Tim for help with your calculus homework. <laughs> Lol. Says Zach S. Uh, that's, that's possibly true, but if so, it's a bad use of your time. You don't, you don't really have the capability to multitask. You should, if you're trying to do calculus, you gotta, uh, you gotta focus on your calculus. Maybe put on some music that you've heard a million times, so that you can, uh, so that you can tune out distractions and such, and, and, you know, get yourself into the groove. But if you're trying to listen to me and do calculus, you're really doing one of those things at once. You're not doing both of those things. You're, like, switching your, your attention very very, very quickly from one thing to the other, but, you know, the more you spend on me, the less you spend on actual solving calculus problems. Which I'm sorry to say, if that makes people realize that they can't be around here and they're gonna, you know, I, I, I'm gonna lose them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lob copper. I don't have calculus homework. I was just curious. Ha. Ha, Zach S. <laughs> Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Mmm. I just listen to music that's not based on words while doing homework and stuff. 
I, whenever I used to study in physics, I would, like when I was doing physics as a degree, I would listen to like the most brutal, like speed metal, chaotic thing that I could, I could find. Usually, uh, Strapping Young Lad was my favorite speed metal band, which is just like, it's just like noise and chaos and screaming and um, but it was so intense and unyielding. Oh, and also Devin Townsend's uh, Ziltoid the Omniscient album. Um, Ziltoid the Omniscient. Um, which is all, it's an album entirely about an alien who comes to Earth in search of the ultimate cup of coffee. Um, I used to listen to that a lot while studying because I knew it so well that I could just tune it out. And also it was so incessant that I, uh, I, like, it didn't have any surprises for me. I could also sleep to that, actually, on the bus every morning. Um, Tafska says ZTO cover. Oh, that's a little beyond my skill set on the, uh, on the piano, I think. Um, I might be able to do hyperdive or something, but... Oh, Jessica says we want to see here Metal Tim. Well, that's, like, I've got this, uh, this thing here, this, uh, drum set, and I haven't got it hooked up yet. And so, probably when I'm, once I get that hooked up and I have, like, drum samples, then I'll try to do some more, like, rock metal stuff, because it doesn't really work right now. Oh, we could do, we could do Solar Winds. We could do a bit of Solar Winds. Yeah, yeah. I don't usually do, like, like, requests of this type. But I really like... But this one's... Like, this Devon Town song, Sen song... Is actually pretty, uh... Pretty... Sciencey. Because uh, it goes into it goes into a lot of uh, metal there, and it just like it doesn't really work nearly as well. Um, so so we're, we're gonna we're gonna stop there. Yeah, Devin Townsend's like been uh, like one of my favorite artists for probably since I was like nineteen twenty. He's Canadian Canadian metal dude out from the West Coast, um, and he's actually doing a, a cool like quarantine thing right now because he like had to cancel his tour. And, uh, it's, it, like, it's, like, a super, like, a, you know, if, you, if you're, like, trying to, I don't know, support, like, a whole team of people, having to cancel your world tour is, is brutal. So he's been doing this thing where, uh, he releases, like, a song every day, which is insane. Um, it's, got, like, his quarantine project. Um, and I think he's raised, like, like over $50,000 to keep his, his family and his team going off of that. So that's cool. Good on him. And also just, like, providing us sweet music while we're all stuck in quarantine. That's awesome. Um, he also has Canada tattooed on his uh, leg, which is, uh, something that 
you know, tell tell us in the chat whether there, I should put can I should tattoo Canada on my leg. I suppose. Mm, let's see. This is a thing. This is a thing that requires. J Deep survey asks a very serious question. Why did you stop making videos? Your work is highly underrated. You should be in Shark Tank, making this a full time thing, which helps students understand difficult topics. A big salute to you, dude. Here's the truth, J Deep. I have been gone a long time. I was trying to make a really complicated video, and I kept getting distracted by my brain. You may have noticed my brain skips around all over the place. Probably makes for an okay time watching live. When you can't focus and you gotta get something done You can get really discouraged and look at everything else but that Oh yeah And that's sort of what's happened to me Oh, I don't know why Something about having total freedom Cause I don't know how to have bosses But it doesn't help productivity, no And if I went on Shark Tank, I think I'd probably just flub it. I'd probably promise them more than I could deliver, and then they'd sue me when they realized I couldn't deliver. I have been working on a live show sometimes, and done a couple performances in the past year. And maybe one day when this is all over, I'll tour to your city, depending on where you live. Or depending on whether you reach out and say, hey, there's a spot for you to go to my city. of ideas for this channel and I want to put my effort into them but right now I'm trying this brand new thing it's only been two weeks and I think I like it being here on the stream I think I'm gonna do it more is done Probably go on Twitch or something I don't know But then I'll get back to making your videos Glad you stuck around So probably hit that notification bell or something Not to be crass about it Gideon pointed out yesterday that these streams will probably kill my reach because not a lot of people watch them. So if you want to see the new videos, you better like notify yourself because otherwise it'll probably be like two months after I make it that you finally realize it exists. <laughs> yeah. Answers your uh, hope that answers your question. Um, let's do another. I don't know. Like, let's do let's do a song. Let's do an actual uh, an actual ACS song. An acapella sign. Oh, J Deep says turned all notifications on. Sweet J Deep. Uh, thanks and thanks for your question. Um, I appreciate that. Like, like I forget I forget sometimes when I don't post a lot of time that like people are I don't know people are concerned <laughs> like. I, I've got a few Patreon questions in the past few months, like Patreon things like, Tim, where are you? We're worried about you. And it's like, I don't know if you, like, I understand that. I do genuinely. Um, before this happened, I had a really good, uh, like, talk with Grant over the, like, just over FaceTime. Where he was like, dude, you gotta finish, you gotta finish your video. <laughs> like, stop trying to, 
solve get a Nobel Prize off of this video. It's that's not what we're doing here on YouTube. You gotta you gotta make this thing. Um, kind of shamed me into it, and then I actually started working on it again, and then this happened, and I was like, oh crap. Well, here we are. Let's do. Oh, uh, should we do? Do. I mean, people, people, Zach asked for Evo Devo. I've been doing Evo Devo quite a bit, but I do like it, and it works well, and it's fun to build up. So, uh, or Zach, you also want to do Whole New Worlds. I did a Whole New Worlds, like, part of it. Let's see, let's see, I don't know, let's see what kind of version of Whole New Worlds I can do. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little rough. It'll be more like, more like what we did with, uh, uh, Bohemian Gravity, where it's like, oh, do you remember this? Not really. Um, and there's gonna be some mistakes. But let's, us stop, uh, stop giving yourself excuses, Timothy! And, uh, see what you can do. Mm -hmm. A whole new world, a whole new world. That's what we'll see. That's what we'll see. What is it? There we go. Doppler shifts its glacial pace, and that astrology never prevails. Oh wait, that's not that's not the first one. What is the first one? Uh, maybe we'll just do that one. Well, button Doppler shifts his facial pace, and that astrology never prevails. Maybe you're in the cause up in space. You got a plan if I never fail. You got some power of statistics now. You got a view without an atmosphere. So no more lights been locked up in your tower. All you gotta do is wait right here, and I'll say, Mr. Kepler, the planet search. You got a kid for five to be. We just measure brightness, plot it out, and that's transiting photometry. When your kid stars do this, and your curves displace, and your stars got this transiting its face, then you hit compute, and looky here, you get good diameter data from that dip. And orbit distance from the length of the year Well now we need this channel supported by A real server with a good shell We got 2,000 planets certified 2,000 all in all the time will tell Well let's take one all and party it down And find out if they're really all alone Is there a rocky world we found? No doubt that orbit's in the habitable zone Like home, Kepler the planet search You gotta hit for a find to be Part of a throne 40 billion star And there ain't never been a field clever as a field There ain't a feel better than the feel they call exoplanetology. Exoplanetology. Yeah, it was, uh, so the people in that were Julien Neal from uh, Treadbull, and then the guy who sang that one was Sam Robson, and he just nailed, knocked it out of the park. Like, he added so much to that part that I didn't put into it. It was pretty excellent. He's actually in. I can show you a world, a shining, shimmering planet. Mound concealed in the band shifts of the closest star inside. And I found hope in the skies. And facing wonder, I won. 
Could the sash sine wave discovered be a planet fit for life? A whole new world, a new fantastic point of blue, placed in that narrow zone where water flows midway between cold and steaming. A whole new world, its sun a faint and reddish hue. from afar da, da, da. wouldn't close up be bolder next to its parents flare if life is theirs getting out of my range we'll know through atmosphere spectroscopy cut the glare of the star a new horizon to pursue chasing that crazy dream that's always been of walking in a whole new world with you a whole new world a whole new world that's what we'll see that's what we'll see a thrilling chase a home in space for you There's that. That's a thing that I did with a bunch of cool people like Gina. Uh, uh, wait, am, am I blanking on her name? Shoot. Uh, what's her name? What's, what's Gina's last name? I've completely, um, completely gone out of, gone, gone out of my, uh, I don't know. I, I got, I got memory problems, people. I got memory problems. It's don't blame me. Blame the neurology. Blame me. You can blame me. That's fine. Um, we're gonna, hold on, we're gonna put a, uh, a, a thing, Gia Mora, Gia Mora, I can't believe I said Gina, Gia Mora is her name, she's part of, well, she's, she's an excellent person in her own right, she did a whole, uh, one woman musical called Einstein's Girl, which is, like, just fantastic, and you should go listen to it on Bandcamp, I think she has it on Bandcamp, and, uh, then, uh, after that, uh, I don't know, you should check out the Sirens, S-C-I-Rens, because, uh, there's a whole group of them that have, have formed up of just, like, ladies doing sweet scientific art things, and it's, it's real cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, we need something, uh, we need something sort of pensive. Uh, what's pensive? Uh, something dark and, like, Edgar Allan poe -ish. Oh, but we want it to be about about goodness. We want to have some hope. A nice soothing, soothing little backing track. We're gonna go to the Discord. We're gonna go and see what people have said. Once, once again, in in the Discord today, in the the daily discussion, I asked some folks, um, what is the greatest good? What's the? <laughs> we're gonna get philosophical here. What's the greatest good? 
Um, you know, when people talk about the greatest good for the greatest number, or, you know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, or whatever. You want to be a utilitarian. Whatever you want to be. I feel like everyone's a utilitarian, except that not everybody agrees on what the good thing is that is trying to be, uh, trying to be maximized, you know? Is it virtues within yourself? Is it things like, uh, is, is it happiness? Just raw happiness, like electrodes in your brain? Um, is it, uh, I, is it Frozone's wife? I'm the greatest good you're ever gonna get. Um, as, uh, who, who made that joke? Oh, Prox made that joke. Thanks, Prox. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just some things off the top of my, like, just words, right? Um, happiness, like, happiness, is it happiness, is it freedom? What if happiness and freedom come into conflict? What if you're free, what if you're happier when you're less free, or you're freer when you're less happy? Justice, loyalty, legacy, connection, culture, beauty, awe, knowledge. These are all things that could come into conflict in your brain, and I think, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of believe Jonathan Haidt in terms of, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of different circuits going on. Um, Alex Noth says the choice, choice, happiness, happiness and freedom. Um, the standard upper and answer is happiness, but only if you want it. So that's interesting. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm probably butchering that a little bit. Um, Prox is, Prox believes that, uh, some of those, like some, like I asked which, are those, some of those primary and some secondary. Prox thinks some of them are primary. Um, says, I believe that anything that directly improves humanity's fitness in the context of survival is working towards the greater good. I mean, that's interesting, Prox. I could, uh, let's, like, okay, let's give you your, your due before I, uh, I respond. Um, human, human survival is a good thing, which, okay. If we're thinking from a human perspective, i.e. human survival is a good thing. So from a cold logical standpoint, it would be knowledge that's most important. Of course, what makes us human might not necessarily boost our survival capabilities, and you could argue that these are equally important. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to talk about the way to make, uh, to, to make sure that humanity survives the longest, like, you would want to reduce us to the simplest possible thing. Like, you might even want to take away all of our extraneous growth capabilities and just have, like, figure out a way to clone our embryos and then send them out on spaceships to, like, populate the entire known universe with cloned one-celled human embryos or, I mean, even sexually reproduced one-celled human embryos. That would be the way to maximize our survival from an evolutionary standpoint. Um, I think a lot of people would, I mean, I would consider that a dystopia. Um, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're losing concurrent viewers. Are the new viewers gone yet? I think the new viewers are leaving because uh, this is not, you don't want to hear me, dear philosophy, I guess, but I want to hear me. Talk about philosophy. Um, Atraquia agrees with Prox. Um, I think the greatest good is happiness. Is I don't think the greatest good is happiness, nor health, nor beauty, nor most things other people might say, because all those things are fleeting, and someone can live a good life and leave a legacy without either of those. I say the greatest good is kindness, because kindness is contagious. That's cool. Um, Yeah, I, I think kindness is very important. I tend to, I, I'm not sure what, but it's, it's one of those words that, that like, begs, it begs a definition, doesn't it? Because, like, when people say, like, just don't be a jerk, it's like, well, what does that, what does that mean, right? What is, what is being kind? Um, is, is kindness wanting, like, I would say that kindness is wanting the good of the other person selflessly. And then we get right back to the same question of what, in fact, is the good that is to be wanted? And I think so many of these things are actually, like, they're, they're subconscious. This is why it's so hard to, like, do moral philosophy, is because, like, it's like linguistics. Like, you know that, you know that a word or a phrase sounds right long before you study linguistics and figure out, like, the, the structured, like, tree diagrams of why it should sound right and why it might not. And like it's kind of uncertain whether even linguistics can put into can be put into that because fundamentally it's it's in your brain first, and like it feels to me like goodness is like what is good is kind of like that. It's like it's like you know it when you see it, but every time you try to codify it, it slips away. 
Amma says the greatest goods are love, peace, and health. Stroopwaffle, who CV Koning says greatest good is maximizing endorphin levels for the greatest number amount of people without endorphin injections and any other type of tampering. Hmm. I mean, the obvious, the, the obvious like Socratic question there is, why without the artificial measures? I mean, everything, everything we could do to get us above kind of our base rate is artificial. Like, why are we put, like, why are we putting this hard line between, uh, like, if, you, if you're going to talk about just like raw maximization of endorphin levels, why not put just maximize them artificially? I mean, we we don't do it now because there's no way to actually do it effectively. Like, if you if you try to chemical your way into happiness, you end up in horrifying states of misery. Um, but imagine that you could chemical your way into happiness and solve the downsides of horrifying states of misery. Would we still think that it was a negative to do it? I mean, we don't generally think that it's a negative to take antidepressants. Um, because they're they're making you happier and helping you lead like a, a normal life that's going to solve the problems caused by your unhappiness. Um, you know, it it seems to me arbitrary that I mean there there are stigmas towards antidepressants, but I think they're they're fundamentally more more stigmas than than actual you know like things that have real philosophical value. Um, you know, if I if I invented a an AI and I said make everybody perfectly happy and it and its result was to stick electrodes in every person's brain and make them so blissfully happy that they agreed that this is in fact the best thing that could have possibly been done for all of time and then it set about multiplying the human race as much as possible so it could, it could have as many perfectly happy humans with electrodes in their brain as possible doing doing nothing else I don't like that future I don't know I like even though I would agree with it that it is like if I were put in that situation I would believe that it was the right thing because I would be so happy about it I'm not that now and I think that given the choice now I would reject it yeah Stroopwaffle is argu arguing that uh, you're not allowed to tamper but I still I, I guess I don't see it seems arbitrary to me um, the, the no tampering rule. Um, Le Marco is saying, I have severe depression. I had severe depression. Antidepressants isn't the ultimate solution, but in my case, they definitely helped me feel better. Yeah, I mean, antidepressants, like everything else, are, a, like, they're a mixed bag. Like, I have a very close friend who, with her first antidepressants made her, uh, made her depression, turned her depression into something way worse. Um, because they just didn't interact well with her brain and now she's on ones that are that like are helping her get back to normal but they have you know certain side effects because we just haven't perfected it very well right it's it's hit or miss and every brain is different um, but if you have like if you're on antidepressants and they work great right <laughs> great like don't uh, anything if, if, uh, if you're drowning grab the rope man someone throws you a rope whether it's a chemical rope or whatever. Alex Knott says, I prefer something that's more based on freedom with informed choice or informed consent. So a combination of happiness, freedom, and knowledge. Like, I would... Yeah. I, I think... I, I, wanna, I wanna put in a vote for, like, like awe and, and beauty and, like, meaningfulness. Um, which, I don't know, maybe, maybe makes me... Maybe it's my, my Catholic upbringing or whatever, but... There's this, there's, a lot of religions have this understanding of, um, like, beauty in suffering. And, uh, like, you might argue that that's just because the world is horrifying and filled with suffering and that you have to make what beauty you can out of it. And, you know, so it's, it's kind of like, here's your consolation prize for your horrible world. Um, but I think there's something fundamental there that, like, like maybe you can maybe we can figure out how to have the meaning without the suffering but just happiness is different from meaningfulness i think um and a life worth living and that's one thing that i've noticed in this time of crisis is that i'm feeling a weird sense of cohesion and community and meaning 
that uh, like in in my ability to take actions that might have real consequences for real people. So yeah, is that uh, is that soothing? Should we do some should we do some meditation, some ASMR? We could do a little ASMR if you just want to put on some headphones and just relax a little bit while the music plays. And then after that, you can take out your glass of water. Okay, so that's a little weird. Um, increase the mic volume if you want to do ASMR. That's true. I should turn the mic volume up if I want to whisper into the microphone. I'm sorry, Jan Hoffman, but you're right. At least I'm not smacking my lips when I talk. Okay, um, let's go. Let's go back down. I'm glad. I'm glad y'all are a little bit hydrated. Um, we're gonna do another song now. Oh. Yes, we're doing a song now. We're doing a song today. Okay. Um Yeah, let's let's do it. By by uh semi-popular request and also just cuz I like it and I do it well on loops. I got to do this one. Oh. <laughs> Combining a planned out way Each new piece must be told where to go Oh yeah, now There's a science helping us to understand How our cells encode this architectural plan Signaling each other with genetic tools, oh Oh yeah, wow Phenotype the interface of mouse and man Genotype the files and the sub-programs What that other switch is circuit cords and boot code Evo Whoa, 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 whoa. 
info Looking at the logic in the ways that we grow Every gene directed by a signal key code Proteins that can activate enhance a veto Evo, Devo, signal trigger of the pattern genes that signal Calculating in a life with Gabarinthal Where the heart and liver and the hands and feet go Oh, oh. signal melting tells each region what it ought to be, yo The circuits are deep, they build upon They're all of them, the paleo The paleo's a wicked room, baby In the crucial pathway changes till we get torpedo Where they go, calamity goes And the cyclobic sheep knows See down the cascade like a domino Like you and I, Drosophila The path that makes us optical Was laid a long, long time ago Back before we blew up the Cambrian like a bomb bomb Now my eye protein can make you see out of your bomb bomb Hedgehog and his relatives like Indian and Sonic Set up, set up in a gradient Don't take my embryonic Split for reason, asymmetric Press up and upon it Living on genetic switches and logic From Devo to Evo Adult and embryo Mostly don't evolve in the genes of the genome Save for the mutation Aim to regulation Keep your building blocks And swap their activation From Devo to Evo, parts of alter egos Homologs evolve from repeats in the schema Switch a couple bases in the proper places And watch flies grow legs out of the Evo Devo, stick around for modern synthesis, the sequel Only by combining can a new theory grow Evolution and development to me goes Evo, Devo, signal stick patterns of complexity So, switching up the switches of the signaling node Gets a modular and simple way to evolve Switches, 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 switches! Take no memory! Oh, what is that? Feeling a molecular clock! What's like a one vertebra? One vertebra, one vertebra, baby! Speeding up its rate of snakes, developmental cheat code! Then where will laser state grow? They turn up your stellarinos! Evo, Devo, this is how we go from single cells to people! Every generation and in life primeval! Life and variations and the sand beautiful! Bada boom, from Devo to Evo, vibe to mosquito, patterns are resolved with the signal to vibe a team with a glow tag. Kill it with a morphalino, should I think a morphalino? Devo to Evo, voyage of the beagle, body plans evolve when proteins to within this penalized beauty grows. Aesthetic giant Devo, Evo, Devo, Evo, Devo. In vivo, Evo. Aesthetica in vivo, Evo Devo. Mon amigo, we go, we go on the evolutionary train. We got, oh, we got signal pathways. We got transcription factors in the house. Regulating each other by means of adding on to the beginnings of chromosomes so that they can increase transcription or inhibit it in a thing that's actually a Turing complete calculation system that takes you from a single cell into a multicellular, crazy defined organism where every single cell has a little blood vessel that's right beside it in a space filling network. That's an insane task that somehow your body gets done with a, an, an amount of information that's less than Wikipedia. A lot less than Wikipedia. I can't remember how much, but it's like. I mean, it's like a few megabytes. That's insane. I made a, a, a few megabytes, just very well programmed. You couldn't program. You couldn't tell every cell what to do with a million, with a few megabytes if you had to tell every cell. There's like trillions of cells. We do it by calculation and by patterns, the same way that your computer does. So yeah. Whoa. Oh. Evo, Devo, 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 Devo. What? What? Whoa, 725 megabytes, says Jan Hoffman. That is the amount of information contained in your genetic code. Also, we've got monster trucks coming on Monday, Monday, Monday. Um, I gotta take another sip, so let's go with the... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do another sip right now. Quick hydration break. Link and you'll miss it. Proxent oh, we, we could do things in the- Oh, Proxentari is saying, can you do something in the announcer voice? Alright, let's- let's put on the announcer voice. And we'll- we can just give you- you can just give me things that I have to say in the announcer voice. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell! Alright, what else we got? Brother, why aromatic halides don't give Gabriel Thalamine reaction? 
strange face looking upwards in a questioning way. Nightly Nerdy the Skizzard says, Yah! This is like, uh, this, <laughs> this, this is like the, the Honest Trailers thing. Um, in a world. <laughs> Oh, this I I like this. this uh, should I should I take down the I'm gonna take down the reverb a little bit. Um, okay, you, get, you gotta give me some other things to do. Otherwise, I'm just gonna read the chat. Yes, drink water, drink water, drink water. Yay, Tim's back. This summer, one man. <laughs> this is so stupid. Um, is, does anyone else have things they want to say? All right. A diabetic and reversible. Hold on, hold on. We need, we need like a, we, we need like a, a, a funky, uh, 80s thing to do, to go here. Let's do it. Now introducing various members of the chat. A diabetic and reversible. Super califragilistic expialidocious. One atom. Yes, read the chat. One plus one equals fish. Oh, you should say hydration moment in the announcer voice. E equals MC squared. I thought you are an organic chemistry professor. That man is Zap Rousdower. Super callous, fragile, mystic, hexed with halitosis. People didn't evolve from monkeys. They actually didn't. People and monkeys share a common ancestor. Tim, would you please interview Sean B. Carroll? Maybe. Heck, watch a Nami cost watch by. Very pretty Unlimited power. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Thanks for lightening my mood. Says I'm lyrical with a heart. Thank you, I'm lyrical. Deep hydration moment. Coming to theaters this summer. The romance story you've all been waiting to see on the big screen. Yay! Say something in Spanish. I'm from Mexico. Viva Mexico cabrones! Population dynamics. Stop summoning demons! <laughs> Open the gates! You shall not pass! Unleash the beast. Yeet! Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Lithium the Wise? I thought not. It's not a tale the oxidizing agents would tell you. Say something in French. Mais oui, mon ami. Je peux parler en français, bien sûr. Baguette, ho ho ho. fair, pwill, green, green, gun, 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 The measurement problem. Solved. Coming this summer, the announcer voice by Acabella Science. Subscribe or else. I love the molecular shape of you more than the real one. This sound is awesome. Release the Kraken. Have you test my baguette? <laughs> As the propane flowed into my steampunk gas vesicles, I looked at the city burning, eating my nut and bold hot dog. Take exams. In this corner, weighing in at 70 kilograms, is Henry Gleason. In the other corner, at 68 kilograms, the reigning champion, Frederick Clements. Nice. Welcome to Aperture Science. Acapella science are our sop nuts. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's uncanny how entertaining this is. <laughs> e equals PC. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Avada Kedavra. You will be assimilated. I feel I've missed so much. Are you having trouble finding a cheap ring? Welcome to the jungle, Bunga Bunga. Can you say, you will be corrected for my friend? They're crazy. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the boar goves and the mole rats out grave. Hello, vault tech calling. This. You get demons when you mess up surface tension calculations. I am Iron Man. When life gives you lemons, you make life take the lemons back. I could watch this for a long time, lol. This has been a dangers of sulfur hexafluoride PSA. Astrophysical magnetohydrodynamics is a field as complicated as its name is long. Andrew taught me everything I know. In theaters only. From Hamilton. Whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Mwa, ha, 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 ha. Kneel before the Lord Dragon or you will be knelt. Good. This completes the gymnastic portion of your mandatory physical and mental wellness exercise. Science is magic that works. I like your real voice better. Stanislaus Stravinsky, alias Stangura Khan. I love this way too much. Having trouble finding a cheap ring? Go to Saturn, it rains diamonds there. We need more songs imitating Eminem on oxygen. Lento kona sui kutur bini mutoria pomekani kuali super seriopilas means airplane jet turbine engine auxiliary mechanic non commissioned officer student in Finnish. What did I walk into? says Asilakneg. You're making me say things. This is the best ever. One, two, three. Well, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five. Me too, I like your real voice better, Tim, but this is fun. Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. Remember that word? Quantum pseudo pseudo hydrochlorofluoromagnetic thingy. I am Tim Blay, and I'm here with glorious purposes. <laughs> Wait, does it actually rain diamonds on Saturn? Whoa, King Gaming. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, I, I, I think that's enough of that. I think, I think <laughs> we got there. Maybe we'll do, should that be like a recurring segment on this thing? Because I feel like that's a, uh, that's, that's a, uh, I mean, we could do that. We, we could do that. We could do the high voice. We, we did the high voice a little while ago. Hi, I'm the mighty chicken noodle soup man. That doesn't. I, I don't know if that that quite works the same way. Um, <coughs> yeah, that was <laughs> that was a thing that could be done. Man, ahem, <coughs> Okay, that is that is tough on the voice. That is that is genuinely tough. Now my voice register is down here. Um. It's time for your hydration. Hmm. Coat those vocal cords. <clears throat> I have a feeling like when I come on stream tomorrow, that might have caused me to now go oh, 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 tomorrow. So we'll see. Hmm. Yeah, it was good times. Um. <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know, should we do like should we do a long should we do a long thing about science? Should we do something else first? Um let's go to let's go to the Discord questions. Cause I feel like I looked at questions here in the chat, but I uh I, I didn't actually look at them in in the Discord. So I'm gonna do a couple more questions and then I think then I think we'll go to we'll go to singing about science as we do. So uh let's do it let's do like a similar intro. 
Oh, I don't like that. It's gotta, it's gotta be, it's gotta be the, the chill one. Yeah. See the Discord has to say this is from the questions for Tim in the Discord. Um, so just so if if you yeah if you if you want to know if you want if you if you want to sign up for the Discord um, go see what's what's going on there. Um, this is from questions for Tim. There's another thing in the Discord. Um, I asked about I asked about like what what COVID resources are there for like people like because we're a bunch of smart people here and I feel like a bunch like if there's something we can. Like, if, it, if we could make even, like, one connection between someone who can, like, contribute something and, like, the skill like the skill set they have, like, there's a couple links that I put down there, I think. I think I've got, like, like there's a website called helpwithcovid.com where, like, people can just put projects that need volunteers and, and, like, special skills and people can, like, sign up for them. There's a Canadian one as well that I put there. Um, there's, like, Folding at Home, which you can just run in your browser and it'll, like, use... Um, like your your latent CPU while you, while you're not doing anything and help solve protein folding problems because right now they're looking at the, the COVID spike protein. Um, but I also asked in the in the COVID thing in, in the COVID section of the Discord, like, um, is there like what what are other things like this? Because I want to put together like a collated list um, so that I can like just direct people to it. Like, hey, here's ways that like nerds can do something. I think that'd be really cool. Um, so that's that's in the COVID nineteen section of the Discord. We're trying to keep all of the virus talk in one place in the Discord. Um, but let's just let's just see if there's anything going on in the questions for Tim. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Ann Smith wants to know if I can get on anyone who can sing with me, like Dorothy, who, who did the uh, did, did uh, the Nanobot song, or Melinda, or Diana, or Derek, or Simon Clark. Um, the answer is possibly. Like right now, I don't know if anyone has a good idea about how to solve the lag problem, because like when I'm doing live streams, there's like. I mean, there's probably like at least half a second delay between the time I say something and the time a person at the other end hears me. And then there's another half second delay for them to say it and it to come back. And that's really, like that makes jamming or, or like like musical collaboration over stream like really difficult. Um, so like one, one uh, uh, Pilly Pie and I were talking about an idea where we could, uh, like you, you could figure out a way to actually make the lag longer so that it would like line up with the loops and try to make some sort of, I don't know, like bodge together some sort of program that you could do that. Um, yeah, Alex is saying the same thing. Um, but I don't, like, I'm not sure how I would do that. Like, you'd have to have something that measures, like, either, like, measure the leg at some point and then adjust for it. It would be better to have something that, like, is pinging the, the lag on the fly and then adjusting the delay on the loops accordingly. And it sounds difficult. Um, so that kind of, like, until we solve that, that kind of inhibits, um, like, musical jams. We can get people on who can, like, like sing, like, like, just do solo musical things on that end, and then I could do, you know, I, could, I we could, like, trade off and stuff. Um, but... Yeah, is, is there any protocol for maintaining a constant level of lag? I don't think so, Alex. Like, I, I imagine there could be, like, you could buffer it and make, like, but the problem with that is that it would, it would always be, like, the longest amount of lag that you would reasonably expect from any chance events. Like, uh, like, sound programs do this, where they have a specific buffer, but you have to make it longer than you would, you would ever need to process something, because if you make it too short, it just starts clipping and glitching, and it's horrible, so... I don't know. Should I turn this down a bit? I feel like I'm gonna turn it down a bit. Verb that function. The Mamguzian says, I tried to volunteer to help during the COVID thing, but they've had 750,000 volunteers and closed the door. Uh, I mean, that's that's good, I guess. I mean, I hope they can I hope they can work through them and and find the people who are actually qualified. 
because that sounds like a bit of an overload. It's, I mean, it's cool that so many people are trying to help, though. Um, Lay Marco, what's the, what's the Discord channel? Go in the, Lay Marco, go down into the description. There's a link where you can join the Discord. There's like 500 people there now. We only started it like a couple weeks ago. But there's 500 people, and they're all a bunch of musical science nerds I'm talking about different things. Um, so yeah, do that. Go over to the intro, introduce yourself. Hope to see you there. Um, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. J O O one O O O O one is showing me space warp dynamics. Yeah. I'll show you how to build a warp drive. Yeah. Um, I still think that it requires a, a type of a, a type of matter that doesn't exist. Like you can draw the diagram, but there's some points in that diagram that have negative curvature, and no one knows, knows how to make negative curvature in space. Um, Ann Smith is asking, have you ever done a gene editing or modification experiment? No, although I did. There's this guy who is of dubious reputation, depending on who you ask, um, who, I can't remember his name, but he's a former NASA engineer and he started like a biohacking lab out of his garage. It's called the Odin. And he like sends out, <clears throat> or like he sells basically CRISPR kits um, where you could, Oh, Lay Marco, don't worry about it. You're not you're not dumb, you just didn't know. Um, but yeah, it's right there. Uh Yeah, um, and he actually sent me I I, I emailed him, I was like, hey, can I get one of your like simple CRISPR packages? And he sent me a package where you can you just have some yeast and you can crisper it to turn it red. Um and I haven't had the courage to actually take it out and use it. Like, it's not dangerous at all. Literally, all you can do with it is tur turn some yeast red. But, I mean, the, I don't know. Maybe should, <laughs> should we do that on the stream someday? Just take out that box and, uh, like, open it up and, like, Hey, let's, let's genetically engineer together. I don't know. have any more questions the questions stream is mostly people talking about the protocols for lag it's good that people are trying to solve that with me oh yeah i think that that's it lay marco says i checked the patreon page and didn't notice the youtube description uh -huh. oh i should yeah I should put more, I should, I, maybe I should plug the Discord more in the Patreon. I think I did one Patreon post about the Discord. Um, but, I don't know, I'm trying not to overload my patrons, because I've, for a while I've been, I've been saying like, every day I've been like, here, here's my, here's my live stream. Uh, yeah. Oh, King Gaming is asking, what are your thoughts about COVID as of now? When do you think we're reaching the peak? Mm, not for a while. Not for quite a long time, I think. I mean, it depends. Like, the peak peak in terms of numbers is a function of what we do as a society. Um, so the more crazy things we're willing to do as a society, the less, um, like, like the, the shorter, the smaller the peak will be, but the greater the implications on life will be for the, for the rest of until we get a vaccine or whatever, or, like, effective prophylactics. So... Like, it's kind of a trade-off, so if you're talking about the peak in... If you're, if you're talking about like, the peak in cases, or you're talking about the peak in terms of, like, like the peak of where, where things stop being more restricted and start going back to normal, those are, like, almost inverted. Um, like... Like, if you, if you do nothing, it'll be over real quick, but the peak will be real high, and, you know, you're talking about... Some like five billion infections, one percent casualty rate. So probably it's gonna last for a while. And uh, I mean, the peak in the peak in cases will be when people get their people get their act together enough to get the transmission rate below one worldwide. Um, that's what's gonna be as soon as any given person is transmitting to less than one additional person on average. Then that's what that's when you peak. So. You know, the, 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 the thing that we really have to figure out is like, what are the, what are the most effective, what's like, what's the best bang for our buck? Like if there's an 80-20 rule in terms of social distancing where like 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes, we only need like an, an 80% would totally be enough. 
this thing's R is like 2.5, but you just have to get it below 1. So that's like, you know, you need to get like a 60% effect. If there is an 80-20 rule, then there's also like a 64-4 a 64 rule, which means that potentially we could do like 4% of the actual measures that you could imagine doing, and that would be enough to get you all the way there. Um, but the problem is no one really knows what those are. So we're just like doing everything, because like, the transmission is, is choppy, and like, we're not sure, and like, the things that would really help, like everyone having masks, like, they, we can't do them right now. So, I don't know, it's gonna be a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was your COVID talk for today. Oh, yeah. And stop. And it's time once again to do... I think you know what time it is. I think you, I think you know it's the last it's the last six minutes. Um, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do it. People are still talking about COVID. If you want to keep talking about COVID in the Discord, we've got a COVID uh, we've got a COVID discussion, and you can you can put it there, and maybe I'll I'll look at it and answer you there. Let's kick it off. Oh yeah. Let's do it again. Sing about quantum chromodynamics. Oh, yeah. It's a very complicated field. I don't know if I have it under my reign. No, there is a lot to explain in there about gauge and variance. Oh, non linear. It's not even a billion. That's why it doesn't make sense. Cause you got some fields that are made of lots of little fields, yeah. They go together and they form a symmetrical group, oh. There might be eight of them for SU3. And if you start doing equations, you run into problems, oh yeah. You don't get a free low energy no instead you get high energy freedom oh yeah asymptotic freedom which means the harder they hit them the less they interact yeah yeah and that makes it hard to see what could happen at low energy you can't perturb these fields with your equations, that's our usual tack. Oh, yeah, no, we're gonna sing about science. Woo, yeah. We're gonna sing about science. We're gonna sing, yeah. we're gonna sing about science. Oh, yeah, we're gonna sing about science. Oh, we're gonna yeah. sing about. I'm seeing strangelets in the chat. I don't know if I can sing about that. No one knows if strangelets are even a thing. Oh, whoa, whoa. It seems like they might be, but we ain't seen them not clearly. They would be a kind of matter that's just strange quarks packed inside. If you had a quark that was compressed by gravity And then you had a million, million, million of them in close proximity You might think the 
that they could turn into strange quirks. Cause strange quirks are dancer, yeah. And if they go even closer, you could have a more severe geometric tensor of gravity. Oh, oh, but we ain't never seen one, not at all. As for those things that people say about the LHC, that it could make a strange layer here. Oh, no. I don't think that's a possibility to make a strange lid at the LHC that swallows up the world, no. It's been tried with cosmic rays all day and we don't say anything. No, we're gonna sing about science. Woo! We're gonna sing about science. Cosmic rays have more energy yeah, than the LHC. We're gonna sing about science. All the weird things that you can imagine happening we're in the LHC. We're gonna sing about science. Should have already happened by cosmic yeah, rays by now. We're gonna yeah. sing about science. Ooh, yeah. We're gonna sing about science. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're gonna sing about science. We're gonna sing about science. Yeah. We're gonna sing about I think it's gonna do it for our show. I was looking for other things, but I think we I think we've we've covered it pretty well. Um it's 459. Um yeah, thanks thanks everybody for sticking around, man. There's still 62 of you. It's like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Weirdly, I think I think people like people like these these ones more than the ones with guests, which is it's it's harder for me to do these ones. Um, cause, you know, I don't, I, there's no, no one else to, like, bounce off of. But at the same time, it does, like, it does allow for a lot more play. So, I don't know, I think we'll keep doing a mix. Um, next week, I know we've got, we've got, uh, I, I just messaged Tier Zoo, and he's down to do it. So I think we're gonna get a Tier Zoo one next week. And, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see about getting Nile Red on. I'm gonna see about getting an ace. Um... Sally LePage, answer my emails, um, and we'll, we'll like we'll see what else we can do. Um, but for now, please please uh, spam in the chat because I want to see your beautiful names and beautiful avatars, and I'm gonna list them off here before we go. We got Nightly Nerdy, the Skizzard. We got Allison Walker, K Rosego. We got King Gaming, Al. I, I still you gotta tell me how to pronounce this man. A Z L H I A C N E G. Al Alznyaknek. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Um, Durva Vaida. We got Jan Hoffman, Elisa, Limburgish Mapping, Valdemar Burning Hansen. We got Entangled with a Mind. Hey, I haven't seen you before. Uh, we got Jeanette Larson, Proxentari, Allison Walker, Emma Lyrical. Uh, Jan Hoffman again, non Lucidian Dreamer is here. Philip B Beckman, A.A. A. Bowser. We got uh, Dennis Rodolfo, Chino Hoshi, Joshua Lemu. Uh, the Mamguzian, of course, Milan Hlavecek. Laurie Svensson's here, as, as always. Uh, Lay Marco, the Media Wrangler. Radoslava Bonarova. Limburgish Mapping. Lou Rancoiset. Um, Alice. Okay, I'll just call you Alice from now on. Um, Andres Guzman's here again. Mary Mary Mead, C. Smith, Elisa, King Gaming, of course, Wiseman says bye all. Um, ZSMB25, Tapska, or Tap, Tapksa? Tapksa, okay. Ewajasix here, of course. Um, Nightly Nerdy the Skizzard, Matei Bernat, um, Stefan Friedman. We got a, a King Gaming say bye bye, see you on Monday, but actually, King Gaming, we gotta stream tomorrow, because we don't take a full weekend, we only take a Saturday off, and if it might be, it's, is it Saturday for you? Oh, it is! Oh, shoot, it's Saturday for you already, but tomorrow we're having one, because it, this is my Friday right now, um, so tomorrow is, uh, tomorrow's Saturday. If it's, if it's already Saturday for you, I'm, I'm sorry for the confusion, we are doing a stream tomorrow. Um, but we're not, uh, we're not doing one the day after, so hopefully we'll get that squared away in our brains. Uh, yeah, but until tomorrow. About science, woo! Yeah. We're gonna sing about we're gonna science. Sing. We're gonna sing about science. We're gonna sing, yeah. gonna sing. We're gonna sing about science. We're gonna sing about, we're gonna sing about we're science. We're gonna sing about science. We're gonna sing about, yeah. we're gonna sing about we're science. We're gonna sing about science. Sing about science.